Hey everyone, this is day five, week four. This is our last day of our random cell phone pick weekly challenge. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yesterday, uh, I was able to revisit, you know, sunlight, but I wanted to be a little bit bolder. Uh, when I painted uh, Emilia, I was, I was very cautious of not losing a somewhat naturalistic um, depiction of, of her. Uh, I, I wanted to balance that with, you know, more expressive um, areas of the painting that were geometric. But yesterday I wanted to be, you know, to have like a, a, a very bold brushstroke um, because I, I actually felt the, uh, the break between the, the sunlight and, uh, and, the, and the shadow mass was, you know, was pretty... Uh, was pretty evident and I, I thought wow this is begging me to be expressive and uh, I think you know yesterday we did a, a, a pretty cool painting of that it was it was about leaving the choices that I had put down uh, so I had a, a ton of fun it just reminded me uh, of understanding sunlight as, as again as a physical thing you know this this um, this almost river that cascades and, and leaves like this trail behind of, of, of description of form. So I was very happy. It was, it was uh, not super high chroma, but there's some, you know, some nice saturated colors in there. So I, I, was, I was very happy. Even the post that was a little bit sort of tense uh, was almost asking me to, to be more geometric in, in my strokes. So hopefully that painting feels different than all the others that we've done during the week. Uh, and but it doesn't feel forced that's that's super important i don't want you guys to think that i'm just yeah i'm just trying to make up a painter or i'm trying to paint in somebody else's style style which is a terrible word um no no, no. i'm just emphasizing i'm, I'm just uh, accentuating uh different qualities that i find can be in any painting and i really do believe that as painters we should be able to say those we should be able to be versatile enough to be able to to say those things in our painting and maybe it's the illustrator in me speaking about trying to understand myself again not not as a very monolithic painter but as somebody who's flexible and who can accommodate to each situation and i think this week has been perfect for that so i'm um, you know last day uh you guys can do this for the whole month if you want but <laughs> this is last day for us uh and and we'll see you know where it takes us so remember next week Totally different thing. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys next week. Okay, so for this last one, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. The blind Danny pick. Um, we were walking one day, going to the mall. Uh, we, we live like right next to a mall and we usually go there walking. It's, it's probably like maybe a mile away. And... Um, <laughs> And we went past, you know, this trash in front of uh, a building. They had their trash like on the uh, on the curb, and we saw this Bert, <laughs> just really makeshift ghetto, just a terrible, terrible. It looked like a bad pinata or something like that, just terrible chair. And and even Danny was like the first one who was like, "Oh my God, that's so so cool," and I was like, "Yeah, that's amazing." And I was. I'm, I'm a big uh, Sesame Street fan, but, you know, ever since I was little, Bert and Ernie. I mean, they were the top for me. Everything when I was little was Bert and Ernie. So when I saw Bert, I was like, oh my God, that's incredible. But it was like kind of dirty. Um, it's really shifty. Uh, <laughs> but Danny was like, I know I'll sit down, just take a picture. Don't worry, I'll sit down and just, just go ahead and take a picture. And she sat down and we took a couple of shots. And we just laughed. We were like, oh, that, yeah, that's going to be cool. That's going to be funny. But honestly, I had no intentions of, of really, really painting this. Uh, I just thought it was, it was just a cool thing to find like on the street. Uh, and what was cool is that we, <laughs> when we were walking, because um, this was when we were walking back home. And uh, I told her that, you know, that's probably full of fleas or, you know, it's, it, it just looked nasty. <laughs> and... You know, in the walk back home, she was she was like, "Oh my God, you know, my legs are itching." My so yeah, so she's fine. She just had to get like a couple of shots, 
uh, maybe some tetanus. Uh, she's totally fine now. I think she, she'll be out of the uh, hospital next week. So don't worry about her. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm obviously kidding, by the way. She's totally fine. Uh, but, but we took a picture. And um, I know it's, it sounds like a dumb little thing. But honestly, just taking the picture is a, is a super important first step. Uh, nowadays, with, with cell phones, it's so, so damn easy to just stop and take a photo. You know, before, you used to just have to carry your camera around, um, and, and it was a pain. It was, it was annoying to just, you know, feel like you, were, you had to carry this camera around. And, and you know, you, it, when I was a student, you had to buy film. You didn't really know if you exposed the photo properly because we all knew how to take photos, but we didn't. Um, so, but nowadays it's so easy and it doesn't have to be a great photo. It can be like a really crappy photo, but it just has to have enough information so that you can turn it into painting. So I, it, you know, if, if you don't like taking photos, just sit, you know, sit in the curb and sketch for a little bit. And maybe, you know, if it smells nasty, you know, where all the trash is, you can take that with you and say, wow, you know, while I was sketching, I need to. I need to get that feeling of being there because it was, you know, it was the smelly place. It was the smelly, like, you know, moment in the street. Um, but if you don't want to sketch, maybe if you're, you know, I don't know, you're in a bad neighborhood or whatever, just take a picture and, and take the picture that you want. Don't just, like, take a random photo and run away. Like, check your composition, check your light, check the pose. You know, it's it just do go through that little, little effort to try and get to what you want because again doing that can be so it can mean so much to you as an artist just just because you saw yourself just stopping what you were doing whatever it is that you were doing and you said no this is worth it this is worth stopping and even even if all you get out of it is just a dumb picture like like the one we got that is now being painted it, it, it was just fun. It was just fun to say, wow, that's kind of cool. Let me, let me stop. And if you do that enough, then eventually it doesn't matter where you are and your friends are going to be cool with it. You're not going to be the weird person that's constantly saying, oh, could you, still, could you stay still? Could you stay still? Let me take your photo. The light is great. That's all I do with Danny and, and, and my kids. And I think that's perfect. And that's how you train your eyes to be, you know, always, always in tune of, uh, you know the universe that surrounds you and and you will find opportunities to I don't want to say to paint as if the goal was just to paint them but opportunities to get yourself to get to know yourself a little bit better through just just accepting that you know that is something that moves you I don't know what what level it moves you I don't know why it moves you that those are the questions that you have to figure out I can't you know, I can't answer any of those questions. I can answer only mine. But um, but the awesome thing is that you have these uh, testaments of this little journey that you're in. And they're just reminders of, you know, things that attracted you. So do that. Do that. You know, it's, it's again, it's like a dumb little thing, just taking photographs of stuff you like. But, but take them, you know, with the hopes of them becoming something else in the future. Not something else isn't more important, you know, but something else that, you know, just view them as an opportunity. Maybe they are a, poten a potential opportunity to get to know yourself a little bit better. That's, that's probably it. Um, so yeah, so that's the first part. And then, you know, while I was painting this, I took out my lining brush again uh, because... I thought the drawing was a little not, I mean, it's not harder than the rest, but it just had more elements to it. So I, I feel very comfortable with that brush as if it were like a, a pen or a pencil. Just it, 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 if you're sensitive enough, it can make really, really uh, fine and clear marks. Um, it's not, it's not perfect to draw with. I mean, you still have to I, I don't have like, um, you know, the hand of somebody that does calligraphy or, or that does, um, um, yeah, just lining work for, uh, for motorcycles or guitars, you know, those people that have insane hands. Um, no, mine are like butcher hands. I, I, I don't have a super, super sensitive hand. But I, I acknowledge that I had to be a little more careful with my drawing 
if I wanted to have, you know, uh, all of these elements right, and if I wanted to compose them well, to place them well in my uh, spread. This is an unbound uh, spread from, a, uh, I think it's 5 by 8 uh, Moleskine sketchbook. So if I wanted to fit, if I wanted the information to fit that proportion, I, I needed to be a little careful. So all I did was I took just a little bit more time to just do this drawing. And I don't know if you saw me at the beginning. I, I, I moved fairly quickly just to see that where the top of my head was and where you know the sneakers were going to be. Just that big toe in the sneakers, where where it was going to be, and that gave me an idea of you know the proportions, the general proportions. Um, and I also moved to the left just to know that I had enough space to do the um, the chair, the horrible horrible chair. Um, so my tip for complicated compositions would be move quickly through your image. Uh, that way you can actually ascertain if if your marks are uh, relating to each other. And uh, that, that's something that I do constantly. I'll just really, really, I'm not rushing. I'm just trying to correlate every mark that I'm making. And I'm trying to cover as much space as I can in the image. And that way, I'm not going to be thinking about, oh, is her nose right? Or, oh, maybe her mouth is like out of place. No, those are like, those are not even secondary uh, um, things in the uh, you know in in the stage of uh, of where you should be thinking about composition um, you should never care about you know your the placement of the eye or or, or if the nose is right or if a finger is a little bit wrong no all you got to think about is diagonals like big 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 marks um, so do that and the opportunity that I had uh, doing this, you know, sort of more complex. I don't, I'm calling it more complex, but it, it, probably what I mean is that there's more elements to this painting than to the ones that I've been doing, which are, you know, if they're uh, straight, you know, on portrait. Uh, and here I have to deal with uh, a little more variables. So that's all it is. That's all there's to it. Um, but if you think about it, uh, it, you know, if a portrait in itself has a ton of variables in it, you know, all the features are smaller variables within, you know, a bigger... Uh, mass. So I always choose to convince myself of saying um, there is no, you know, nothing is hard. There is no such thing as hard. It's like everything should be exactly the same. It's not like, oh, I'm getting to the hands. Th those are hard to paint. No, they're not. They're as easy or as hard as everything else, which makes them the same. So it doesn't have to be harder or easier. Um, I, I have to maintain my concentration with every single moment of the painting. So why would that moment be any different? Um, but there's just more elements here to try to balance. Let's be honest and call it that. So I wanted to be a, a careful but still very bold when I'm painting. And it was super important for me to, to get those colors in, those uh, bird colors in, um, and then try to relate the figure to to those colors. Uh, I thought that was very, very cool. And as I was saying, this is the perfect opportunity to say something that it's always very, very dear to, to my heart as an artist, which is um, sketches and studies. I actually love them. I probably like them even more so than final pieces many times. I've had conversations with people that tell me, well, you know, these are all fun. This is all fun just doing a sketch, but you know, actual mastery is just putting all that information that you have in the sketch and then doing like a bigger, more complex, more committed composition where it takes you months or maybe years to paint. And I get it. Like I, I totally get what they're saying about bigger paintings. I love, you know, huge paintings. The Grunewald uh, battle uh, of Jan Mateko in, in Warsaw is a tremendous painting. It's probably it could probably be like the coolest painting, you know, <laughs> ever. It's like Rubens on you know steroids. I, I always call it. And I spent, I, I literally, I probably spent around five days looking at that painting every single day, just staring at it. I mean, there were other paintings at the uh, National Museum in Warsaw, but when I went there, it was like going to an altarpiece. It's it's just a remarkable, huge painting. But I'll tell you the story. In, at the uh, Museo del Prado in Spain, in Madrid, uh, there are huge historical paintings uh, downstairs. 
uh, that used to be in the Cazón del Buen Retiro before, but now in, they're in the uh, El Prado. And they are just incredible that, you know, in the 1880s, those last 20 years of the 19th century, th that's the peak of painting. You know, 1880 to 1900s, that is the peak of painting. I'm sorry, but you can't paint better than that. You can paint more, but you can't paint better. I don't think we'll ever be able to paint better than, you know, what these people did in that time. I really, really don't. I actually really, really believe that. That those are some of the most virtuoso paintings ever. I, I really, really do believe that. So there's these huge compositions in there. There's uh, Pradillas, Juana la Loca. I mean, there's tons. There's Casado y Alizal painting. They, they are incredible paintings. But in this wall, in this tiny little wall, right next to those paintings, there's a painting of Mariano Fortuny that's, you know, probably smaller than the size I'm painting this painting. And I couldn't get my eyes off of it. And it was just this, it's this kid that's lying, you know, with his little butt kind of saying hello, <laughs> laying in the grass. And it's just perfect. It's absolute perfection. You really, really cannot paint better than Fortuny at his best. Nobody can. I don't think, I, I think he is probably and will be forever one of the best painters in history. And I can't foresee how anyone would come in the next few years to, you know, just paint anywhere close to what he was able to paint. Um, and I used to like feel bad about myself when I was looking at this small painting this seemingly insignificant painting that's surrounded by these grand paintings and me saying, well, I should be paying attention to the bigger work. Why, why am I always looking at this small painting? You know, it's just, it's just like the study of a nude little kid like laying down in the grass. That's, I don't know. That's, I, you know, I, I should be looking at all the other historical paintings that they spent years painting and they have like, you know, with historical accuracy, they investigated, you know, what what the bookshelves were like, you know, what sort of armor they wore, uh, what the fabrics looked and felt like, you know, and, and, and again, there was so, so many reasons to not look at this smaller painting, but I always did. And I realized that that happens to me all the time. Like, uh, whenever I see a Boldini little sketch, I love those. Like, I gravitate towards those. I'm just insanely fascinated by those. It almost feels like they're closer to the artist's intent than the uh, bigger picture. Because to maintain the energy that you have in a sketch, to maintain that for months, for the months that bigger paintings take to do, is, is, is very improbable. It's almost impossible, I would say. So whenever I see those smaller works or sketches or studies... I see energy, like pure, pure artistic energy. Just, just, I don't know. It's like in, in its rawest form. And I love those. So, you know, among those are uh, a line deckers studies. Those are so much cooler than the paintings. I mean, it, it's just him trying to figure out what he wants to do, which is insane, you know, to have that, to be able to peek into his brain and to see how he was trying to decipher, you know, his paintings is is amazing. Uh, one of the examples I give people is is the Madame X, the one where she's toasting, the sketch that Sargent did. I would pick that sketch a hundred out of a hundred times if I had to pick between that little sketch and the actual Madame X portrait hanging at the Met. There's there's like no doubt in my mind, and I understand how important that portrait is for like American painting, but I don't care. I will I will so pick the small painting there's again no doubt in my mind so if for me these paintings these opportunities to almost evoke the energy that those masterful sketches have it's invaluable to me to be painting every day and to say well I have a couple of hours and let's see if I can trap the energy that a bigger painting would have or a bigger endeavor would have in this you know very limited amount of time and let's try to speak about everything that is happening within this image. And, you know, that's that's my drive with these paintings. I, I always kind of feed off of what I love. And when I was doing this one, again, you know, it's Bert and Ernie, it's Bert, uh, and it's Sesame Street. I grew up with that, I love that, that's my childhood. But uh, but there was just such a quirkiness, there's such a weirdness to the painting. 
Um, there's comfort and discomfort. <laughs> Even Bert just staring at her back is just amazing. That I just wanted to get that. I just wanted to see if I was able to capture that. And, you know, this week was a blast just for uh, giving me an excuse to do that. To just say, okay, you you wanted to paint this, you know, photo or you, you took this photo with the hopes of painting it in the future. Well, now you have the perfect excuse to do it. You know, you just have to spend a couple of hours. Let's see. Let's see what that painting actually would look like. Um, so again, it's no excuse. Like I can't hide behind the fact that these are small paintings and they only take a couple of hours. No, this is like raw painting. If the painting is going to work, it should work right now. If I couldn't get that image to work, it's really my fault. It's not because I didn't have time, because I couldn't prepare myself. It's, be, it's not because I got nervous when, when you know, we were um, recording the, uh, the painting session. No, no, no. You know, this is, I have every opportunity to be able to say things in that allotted time. And uh, for me, it's like this amazing challenge. So I hope you guys felt that during this week because it was pretty exciting. And uh, next week, uh, I'll see you guys. And it's a totally different thing. So uh, get ready for next week. But thank you for hanging out. Bye.